Bum, 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 bum. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite software developer, Tyshine, aka Cold Labs on social media. And if you're seeing this, that means you're at the very last video game and you're about to take part in creating one yourself. So let's get started. So, as you guys can see, here's the baseball game, the, one of the last games that we're going to be making. So, um, if you notice, when the game loads up, the camera zooms in, you know, it kind of focuses on the center and zooms out, because you can actually play with the camera when it comes to phaser. You notice the old man is kind of just bouncing up and down, up and down, so I changed a little bit about his gravity and everything, and once he hits a certain portion of the screen, I make his gravity push him up a little bit more, and when you click down anywhere in the background, he plays the pitch ball animation, so he's throwing the ball to the young dude, and the young dude's kind of bouncing up. You know, so in the score increment, we're not going to put too much thought into this, but you know, this is just some of the things you could potentially do with Phaser. If you want to make core video games, you could do more than the lazy stuff that I'm doing. I've done a lot more than this, so enough talking. Let's get to the important stuff, and that's creating the game. So, as we said before, a lot of these things are going to already be inside of the folder if you're watching this on Udemy. All you need to do is take the same assets and put it inside the game for folder because this is the final game. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to read out the dimensions for your sprite character that you need to create in order to put these people into your own game. So, let's go to the game for folder and you notice I got different things in here. The very first thing I drew was the background and I called it ballpark. So, if we was to right click on the ballpark, bring up the actual properties and then go over to the details you know we're gonna bring the properties for all of these so if you want to open them up real quick you can go through it with me or just listen so open up the properties go over the details for the ballpark the width is just like the last game 800 by 600 you know the width and the height so I'm gonna X that off now we got the ball sound honestly the sound I made it with my mouth you know cuz you know I got a couple different softwares and we're not trying to be super duper fancy, but you can actually add soundtracks and sound to the video game. So, you know, I made a, a little boss sound and did some auto tune or editing with the noise. And the, the um, that, that, that's it for the sound. The next thing we're going to look at is the actual baseball itself. So, the baseball size is 50 by 50. The width is 50, the height is 50. I'm going to X that off. Next, let's look at the catcher. You know, the dude is actually catching the ball. So I made his dimension. I had to kind of just mess around with it a little bit. So his dimension is 75 by 95. And I mean, you can make a character a little bit different, a little bit bigger, but it's not gonna really matter because it's not like it's a big sprite sheet. The sprite sheet is where it actually matters at. But for the um, old man, I call him Geezer. So G E E Z R Geezer. He is um 900 in the width and 100 in his height. All right, so. Now we got the dimensions out the way. Another thing we need to make sure we have is the, the phaser.mis.js file in the actual folder in order for this to work. In order to find that, if you don't already have it, you go to phaser.io.com. Well, phaser.io. Once you get to phaser.io, you go on the right hand side, you're going to see a little area where you download the files. You click on that little area the first time, then the page is going to load back up. You go back on the same area go back to the right hand side click on that again and down in the center you're going to see different versions of like javascript files that you could download you want to look for .mis or phaser.min.js and then download it once you have that take that same file which should be in your download area or wherever you download files at and put it into your, your game 4 folder and then we can actually begin so the next thing I'm going to need you guys to do is actually go to your text editor Go to your file area, go down to where it says open folder, and once you open that folder, look for game 4, it should be on your desktop, and then click that. Alright, seeing that we got the actual folder open and everything, we need to go ahead to our desktop and open up the area where we made our own template, and go ahead and start creating those templates. So we need to make our index.html and our game.js template and put it into the actual game. So let's go to new folder and open that up. Alright. Now that we got a new folder open up, let's go ahead and open up index.html. Once that's open, I'm going to need you guys to highlight that, then um, right click and copy it, or whatever way you're going to copy it, control C, and then go back to your actual editor and paste in the index.html. And before we're able to actually paste that in there, we need to go to the actual text editor, go on the left hand side, right click, and then make index.html, and then paste that in there. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and right click in that same area and make a game.js and then let's go back down to where we got our new folder, double click on 
the phaser game template let's highlight everything you know control a or whatever way you want to do it then copy it and then let's go back to our, our text editor and paste it in the game.js and now we're ready to rock and roll so in the g.init section put score equals zero on the next line put shoot s h o o t equals false so long story short the score is how many times you actually you know the guy caught the baseball you know because you're trying to throw it to him and shoot is going to determine if you can actually throw the ball again because at one point you was able to keep clicking and the ball would never even make it across the screen so now you're going to stop that the next thing you want to do is go down to the preload you type this dot load dot image and then put the string ballpark so b-a-l-l-p-a-r-k after that put a comma then put bar park dot png for the next line let's do this dot load dot image and then put catcher because that's the guy's going to be catching the ball after you pitch it and then let's put a comma then put catcher dot png on the next line we want to actually put the sprite sheet of the player so we're going to put this dot load dot sprite sheet and then for the string we want to put player and for the actual character we didn't just name a character we call them geezer so g-e-e-z-e-r dot png if you look on the left hand side that's the actual name of the sprite sheet for the next spot we need to put a comma and then we need to add an actual object in there and for this object we need to put the frame width of 100 put a comma then frame height 100 then comma next we want to do another thing so we put this dot load dot image and then you put the baseball so baseball for the string then comma then baseball dot png for this spot i actually had to make the sound like i said before so the sound i made was a, a, a swoosh or whoosh sound you can add your own sound to the game by doing um audio so you're not loading the image you're doing this dot load dot audio and then we call the the same the sound of the mp3 bar sound so comma bar sound dot png after that the first thing we want to do now is go down to where it says g.create equals function. Down in there, I decided to play around with the cameras a little bit. I know we didn't mention cameras in none of the other videos, but you actually can play around with the cameras when it comes to actual programming with Phaser. So let's do this dot cameras with a s dot main dot zoom equals three. You know, you got different zooms you could do. So for us, we're going to just start it at three and then zoom out to one. On the next line, let's do this dot cameras dot main dot zoom two and do one then comma 500 so the very first position where it says zoom to one one is the on um, the regular screen size and then the comma 500 is how fast it actually gets there and the half the 500 is actually half a one or in this case it's half a second the next one we want to do continue on let's do ballpark equals this dot add dot sprite then the open close for the function then put for the x position put zero comma then the y position zero comma then the string ballpark and then we want to do dot set origin then open close then put zero like before we're just trying to put the picture in the very corner of the actual you know the screen the video game and now we want to make sure that the ballpark is interactive so we can click anywhere on the screen and something happens so we do ballpark dot set interactive and then open close on the end of that after that we want to actually make the ballpark itself interactive and do something with it so we do ballpark dot on then point it down comma and then the function the open close and then open close curly braces then we put if shoot equals false g dot sound dot play ball sound so what that's going to do is actually play play the sound of the actual ball that we created above next we want to put shoes equal to true to prevent him from overthrowing the ball next to put player dot play pitch what that's going to do is actually play the pitching animation when we create it next do player dot set velocity y open close and put negative 300 so now it's going to make him actually jump in the air every time you click down and only when he's pitching the ball 
the next thing you want to do is baseball.x is equal to the players.x and then baseball.y equals the players.y so what happens is when you click down on the screen it actually puts the ball to wherever the player is located the next thing we're going to do is actually make the ball you know accelerate towards the actual computer itself in order to do that you do baseball.set then capital velocity and then x and then open close and 600 because remember negative is going to the left and positive going to the right and then we want to move to the next line. We do player dot on animation complete, then comma function, then do open close and then open close curly braces, then put player dot play, and then put the word stance inside. So, long story short, that's just another animation that has to be created. Okay, so now we're done with the ballpark function. Let's exit that and then let's go down to the next line. Let's put score then capital word equals this dot add dot text and then do open close and then 500 for the X and zero for the Y. After that, let's put capital score, you know, a string. So score plus the actual score, you know, because the actual score is going to increment every time it actually hits the computer. Then put a comma. After that, we do the object and do font size so fonts will be lowercase and size you know capital and then let's put the actual string let's do 60 px after that leave that actual score word go to the next line type score and then word capital dot set color and then we want to choose a different color you know i just kind of just played through it till i find a, a color that won't really interfere with the actual game itself and now we want to actually put the player in here so let's do player equals this dot physics dot add dot sprite and then let's put him at 100 for the x 200 for the the y and then comma put player so now we got the actual player in the game but we don't, we don't want him to fall through the screen so we got to do player dot set and then after that collide then capital world and capital bounds and then open close for the function and put true in the inside of that so now he can't fall to the screen and next thing we're going to do is add the catcher so you put catcher equals this dot physics dot add dot sprite and then do open close then 600 comma 200 then comma then put catcher so now you got both the player and the catcher in the game so if you were to go to the game right now you notice the actual player, he's able to fall to the very bottom of the screen, but, you know, can't say the same for the, the catcher. The catcher, you know, he fell, he took an L, and he ain't coming back. So, we need to go on to the next thing. We need to add the actual baseball in the game that he's going to throw. So, we have to give it physics as well because, you know, it's got to go towards the other character. In, in order to interact with the, the, um, the catcher, it has to have physics. So, we do baseball equals this dot physics dot add. And then dot sprite, then open close, negative 100, comma, 200, and then put another comma, then you put baseball. The reason I put negative 100 is, is simple, just to get it off the screen, so now you don't see it, but it actually exists somewhere. After that, we want to make sure that the baseball is not going to be moved by any object on the screen, and nothing's going to affect its gravity and all that. So, we do baseball dot body dot Immovable equals true. So now the baseball is going nowhere. You can't you can't mess with it. After that, baseball dot body dot allowed then capital gravity equals false. So now gravity can't even mess with it. And we want to do the same thing for the catcher. So when the ball hits the catcher, he won't be moved. Because if you try it right now, you know the ball is going to just you know debo the the actual catcher and just knock him around. We don't want that. We want him to be untouchable too. So we do catcher dot body dot immovable equals true. So now the ball can't mess with the, the catcher and the catcher can't mess with the ball. So instead of making it so that the uh, the actual catcher can't fall through the screen by doing, um, you know, the set collide world bounds true, we're going to change that and we're going to just, you know, just make him be based on the actual update function itself. So let's go down to g.update equals function and put baseball.angle plus equals 10. What that's going to do is just basically give the spin to the baseball, you know, as if they're pitching it. 
and then under that let's go ahead and make an if else statement let's do if catcher dot y is greater than or equal to 555 catcher dot set velocity capital y and then open close and negative 500 so what that's going to do is that once he hits like almost to the bottom of the screen it's going to just bounce him all the way back up to the top of the screen so he's not we don't have to worry about stopping his bounce and everything from going through the screen now he's going to bounce just enough after that we want to do the same thing for the player you know we did it to him so let's do if player dot y is greater than or equal to 450 then do the um the open close curly braces then put player dot set velocity y open close minus negative 100 so what we're gonna do for him is not give him much bounce that we gave the actual you know the computer you know because you got to actually work for yours plus you got to click and you get the little bounce that you need so now after that let's make one more if else statement and then that should be all the if else that we need for the actual update area now we do if baseball.x is greater than or equal to 800 shoot equals false baseball.x equals negative 50 and baseball.set velocity x zero so now it's saying if you can't shoot the ball just make it stable make it sit somewhere now it goes nowhere at all it just sits you know patiently and quietly and waits to be called by his master aka the player so now we want to go ahead and lead out. We're done with the, the actual update area. So if you were to go back to the game and stuff, you'll notice um, a little bit different stuff going on here. So as you see, my screen's loading up and everything. If you're um, actually looking, and the player's bouncing around, the ball is able to be pitched towards the the player and everything. But you know, when it's pitching towards the actual computer, it's like passing through him. So you're not getting any score or nothing. It's just you know they're doing their own separate thing. So we need to go ahead and create a solution for that. The solution is creating the actual function. We're gonna call that g dot hitter equals function and then open close and the open close curly braces. So we're gonna test this out to verify that we can actually hit this dude. We're just gonna put console dot log and then put the word bang. So now you know if he gets if it touches him, you know it's gonna it's gonna you know say bang in the console. That's kind of the console is what we use to test out and troubleshoot errors, remember? So, you know, get used to it. Now, we want to do for the hitter, you know, once this actually connects, something happens. So, we're going to do baseball.x equals negative 50, baseball.y equals the players.y, and baseball.set velocity x is zero, and then score plus equals one. So, what they're going to do is that once this ball actually hits the computer, it's going to reset its actual position to wherever the player is and then minus 50 wherever the player is for the um the x position and uh, you're going to get one point now the next thing we want to do is write the word score word you know so capital word dot set text and the text should be capitalized well and we want to put open close then string score and then plus score so now the score has been incremented above for score plus equals one now that same score is going to be added onto the actual word on the screen and then put shoot equals false so now when he get hits he's not you know the player is not shooting no more so therefore we can try it again and now you want them to actually interact with each other when you pitch that ball so in order to do that you do this dot physics dot add dot collider and the first parameter you want to put in there is the baseball the second is going to be the catcher after that you're going to put this dot hitter and then for next position you're gonna put no we're not gonna actually use what happens after they actually interact with the hit and then after that put the word this so now if you just go back to the game you know he actually can hit this guy actually because something actually happens now so now we want to focus on the last portion that's actually giving them animations and stuff you know to make it look a little bit prettier so um what we're gonna do is this let's do um this dot a n i m s dot create and then open close and we need to put an object in the inside of that and then hit enter after that type the word key and then the string pitch after that put a comma after you type the word pitch and then you type on the next line frames to the s and then this 
dot a n i m s dot generate capital frames then numbers with us you know then you put the string player inside of the actual function then put a comma and then you want to add the object in there you're going to put start on um, scene one and then a comma then end on scene eight and now um it's going to actually play the picture animation and i want to play how fast animation runs you know how fast it happens you can change it to whatever number you want on the next line but i want to put frame then capital rate then 20. Next, we want to create the stance animation that we mentioned before. So, what this is going to do is actually change him back to him, you know, holding his back because um, that's what he's doing. You know, I drew him, he holding his back. You can say whatever you want, but to me, he holding his back. So, now we're going to do this dot a n i m s dot create. So, I mean, if you really want to, you can just copy what you got up above and change the word, you know, pitch the stance. So, we're going to. Um, go down again inside this before we um you know start back up let's put key and then the string stance do a comma go to the next line put frames and then this dot a n i m s dot generate then capital frames and then capital numbers then open close and put the string player then comma and then object then start on zero comma then end on zero and now you leave that actual frames area put a comma next line frame rate 10 you know probably to put you know beyond you could probably just erase the whole thing and just have no frame rate in there because it's not a you know it's not really planned that you probably could just put one but you know we just want to change it back to the regular position now that that's done let's make something called a flipper i know i didn't mention this before but now this is called a tween a tween you know it's kind of like drags you to a certain area you know so we're going to call this tween flipper so we're going to do flipper equals this dot tweens with an s then dot add the open close for the function then put the uh, actual you know object in the inside of that and the target is going to be getting tweened or you know um targeted it's going to be the player so write the word targets with the s on the end of it and then put player and now you can actually manipulate him. You can make him go to a certain X by putting like X and then a number, then a comma, or Y and a number to comma, and you go to that Y position. But we're not worried about that. We're going to put angle and then 720 in duration, um, a second and a half, which is 1500. So now when the actual game loads up, he's going to come in spinning until he does a 720 angle over a second and a half. And so. As I said before, we're gonna blow through this game and everything, and now it's done. You know, so now you're able to actually play the game, shoot the ball, and try to hit the the computer character. So this has been all four of the actual videos to give you the actual skills to be considered of a software developer, at least on a junior level. So hopefully you've been you know ran through this consecutively, and you know with some vigor or some persistency and now that you have the same skill set you can apply these and make your own video games so for the last video you guys can watch it it's nothing more than me just seeing how fast I could create a video game you know it's gonna be a speed run because originally I wanted to do this in the beginning but I think this is a good time to do it so if you guys need any pointers feel free to reach out to me I'll do my best to get back to you see you around